Sambamani, good evening, Dimalang, and welcome to the Wednesday edition of the Private Property Podcast. I'm your host, Uzamandungwa Kumalo. It's episode 186 of the Private Property Podcast. And as we do every Wednesday, we've got this evening uh, two members of the APSA Home Loan Team. But before I introduce them and talk a little bit about what we're going to be covering this evening, I always, of course, talk about the great programs that you can uh, certainly find across our social media platforms right here on private property. Of course, I am talking about the first time home buyers show that comes to your screens every single Wednesday. It's now at 8 p.m. with SD Classen. So just after the show, you can catch SD Classen for the first time home buyers show on that new time slot of 8 p.m. And every Tuesdays and Thursdays, Umbali Nuoko covers all things agriculture with the farming podcast. So for all of you who've got green fingers or even looking at diversifying your, you know, property portfolio with looking into agri that is the podcast that you want to focus on there's so much to learn and really in better understanding the value chain that is in the agricultural space and over the weekend we never leave you alone chad brings you the home shoppers show that gives you a snapshot of some of the great estates and complexes that this country has on offer so if you're in the market right now and you want to get a sense of what you can expect in those complex and estates and that is the show for you. Now, those are some of the great programs that you can certainly expect on your screens right here on the Private Property Podcast. And as usual, we absolutely love hearing from you. So do show us some love down here below. And to those of you who are joining us for the first time, where have you been? You want to definitely go back to our Facebook and YouTube pages to catch up on the great content that we have brought on your screens. Now, talking about some of the great things that we do and great content, one of the really exciting things that we love doing here on Private Property is giving you an amazing competition or various types of competitions that you can enter and get to walk away with really awesome prizes. Now, the competition that we've kick-started 2021 with is the Sherlock Holmes competition. It started last week, and for the next 12 weeks, we will be running this special competition across our social media platforms as well as our website. So do go on to www.privateproperty.co dot z a it's the second week of the competition and that second riddle is up last week samantha got to walk away with that five thousand and cash voucher um, and she was able to spend it with our different partners for this competition and if you want to stand a chance of walking away with that voucher as well this week then you want to make sure that you follow where the riddle takes you and the riddle this this week is where the water falls and the ibis leads the way i have four places to rest my head and three to store my wheels. That is the second riddle for the second week of the Sherlock Holmes competition. Good luck to all of you at home. I'm very excited to see what you're going to bring up. And we will, as usual, be unveiling who the lucky winner of that 5,000 Rand voucher is right here on the Private Property Podcast with myself, Uzamandonga Kumalo, on Friday. Now, to get us into this evening's competition, it's a second installment of the APSA Home Loan team joining us. Of course, they joined us last week um, as we're looking at some of the aspirations for property ownership in 2021 and this evening we're looking at if you're looking at renovating your home these are some of the important things that you need to consider I know so many of us spent so much time in our homes throughout last year and the reality is many of us are still going to be spending quite a significant amount of time in our homes this year, whether you're homeschooling uh, your children, and I know so many parents you know, have been complaining about homeschooling, or you're working from home. One of the things that a lot of us have picked up is that there's certain changes that we want to be able to make in our respective homes so that they essentially speak to the new, um, you know, the new uh, challenges uh, that we currently now have of needing to work from home and needing the space not just for yourself but perhaps your partner as well as your children to also be able to uh, work from home and those are some of the things that we're going to be looking at what you should be looking out for renovations when you're staying in a sectional title the importance of or how insurance comes into the picture when you're looking at your renovations um, because it is one of those things that you know you want to excitedly make alterations to your home but you don't quite think through 
all the other stakeholders that are affected. And to help us better understand this, I'm joined this evening by Ayasang Abesman, who is the Portfolio Manager of Insurance at APSA Home Loans, as well as Esti Leroux, who's a Manager for Valuation Strategy at APSA Home Loans. Uh, Ayasang, Esti, good evening, and thank you so much for joining us this evening. Thank you, Zama, um, and greetings to the viewers as well. Esti, I'm actually going to start with you because I think this is one of those topics that, uh, you know, with so many people last year working from home, some of them thought, you know, what, I don't know if we're going to end up working from home the whole year. We found ourselves, of course, being in lockdown the whole year. We're going to stay uh, working from home for the rest of year, the year. And we all know that for, for many of us, our homes just weren't speaking to the new realities that we now currently have in terms of what we require from our home. So when we look at that then, what approvals do people need, if any, when they want to make um, any changes to their property? Um, so it depends on the change you want to make. If it's maintenance related, for example, you want to repaint the interior of your property or you want to replace your kitchen cupboards in most, you, you don't need any approvals. Um, um, but when you want to make structural changes to your property, you will require approvals from your bank if the property is bonded. You will require plans to be approved from your local municipality. Um, you might require um, approval from your neighbours. Um, when you have a sectional title complex, you will require approval from your body corporate. Um, if the participation quota is affected more than 10%, you would have to um, get approval from bondholders. Um, so there's quite a lot of approvals that you need to take into consideration. And my advice would be, if you start this journey, engage a property professional and make sure you do your research um, because there might be things that you're not thinking of that, that is important during this journey. <laughs> and and Esti, when we then look at that, I mean, at which point, um, if at all, do you then even notify the bank? Uh, because I think some people, you can understand, you know, updating the municipality, perhaps even talking to uh, your neighbours or getting that approval from your neighbours. But at which point does then your bank get involved um, when, you want, when you're looking at doing alterations uh, in your home? So I think it's very important to in, include your bank from the outset. Um, so it is a contractual obli obligation um, for you to inform your bank if you're making structural changes to your property. But more than that, I think you should consider the bank your partner in your own ownership journey. And if you want to make, um, if you want to add to your property, um, Informing your bank and taking them on the journey with you is very important. Um, as I said, making changes to a property can be quite complex um, and you might need advice regarding insurance. You might need advice on what products the bank offers you um, to be able to afford the alterations. Is there equity in your property that you can use? Um, and then you can ask with regards to um, further advances or re-advances. Um, the other factor that is very important is if you include the bank from the outset, um, you won't run into a, a, a issues later during your process. So, for example, if you started making alterations to your property because you thought you're going to use your cash, and during some uh, during the project you run out of cash, and then suddenly you have to uh, uh, notify your bank and you have to ask or apply for a bond at the bank. When we send out our valuers, they might pick up that some of the work doesn't conform necessarily um, to our requirements. And, and that might add to the costs um, that you didn't budget for. So my advice would be um, from a partnership perspective to, to take your bank on the journey and um, to get as much information and guidance from your bank um, mm -hmm. when willing to assist. You know, as later on, I definitely want us to look at what the repercussions are in the event where viewers at home don't involve the bank uh, when making those alterations where you would typically inform them. And perhaps even under what circumstances a bank would maybe not agree to the changes that you want to make. But before we get there, you know, as I want to bring you in because... Esther did mention uh, insurance and how effectively insurance would get affected uh, when you make alterations. But perhaps take us through the way in which, um, you know, home renovations has an effect on your insurance policy or insurance cover that you'd have over your home. 
Thanks, Emma. Um, I think probably the most important thing to note, insurance policies ultimately have an annual escalation that have come through um, in terms of adjustments on premiums. And with those premiums actually don't cater for big things, I guess, in terms of reservations. So that just basically caters for the building uh, replacement cost value adjustments on an annual basis. So when you do renovate your property, chances are the value of what you have in your structure is going to increase. And it's important for you to then contact your insurance provider to make sure that once you've got your renovations complete, you're insured for the right amount. There's nothing worse than finding out that you're not so adequately insured when a claim event um, occurs and then suddenly you don't get the, the full amount paid that you're expecting in order to refurbish your property in essence. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I can imagine, especially right now, as so many different people are, especially if you, you know, you've got a property where you've got quite a bit of space in your yard, you're able to maybe add that additional bedroom or maybe even a home office. And that would probably have a... Uh, have a significant uh, difference in the value of your respective home. And if you don't Mm. change that, uh, it basically means that the current insurance policy you have won't be able to adequately cover that. But we also know, Asana, that not everybody lives in a freehold property. Uh, A lot of us, unfortunately, live in sectional title communities. How does that then come into play when we're living in sectional title communities? Yeah, I think Esther kind of covered this a little bit, I guess, in noting on body corporates, you are governed by the, well, in sectional titles, you, you're governed by the body corporate and you have to follow the rules. So when that is concerned, it's always important for you to reach out to the body corporate and make sure you understand the rules so then you adhere to them in terms of um, what has been done on the property because you obviously ultimately might end up getting fined um, and all those kind of things that can happen. And I think it's important just to make sure you don't transgress those rules because it also can impact your agreement from a mortgage loan agreement perspective. Mm. And, and, you know, I, I always talk about some of the sectional title horror stories that a lot of us sometimes tend to encounter where you do find that homeowners aren't quite aware of what it means to live in a sectional title community. They want to make alterations that the border corporate has not approved. And they would argue, well, this is my property. I bought it. I'm paying this monthly bond installment. Therefore, I can do pretty much whatever I want. But the reality, of course, as many of us and certainly viewers of the Private Property Podcast know is that that's simply not how it works when you live in sectional title communities. So to viewers at home, it is so important to Always bear that in mind when you live in sectional title communities that, uh, especially people who have ground floor units, because I tend to find that those are the ones that think they've got a bit more leeway, they can do as they please. And oftentimes you'll find that your particular complex or estate also has rules around what kind of alterations you can or cannot make in the garden that you have uh, when you have when you're in the ground unit. Sometimes when you've got a balcony, what you know the kinds of things that you can't put on your balcony because they want it to be to to look a certain way. And these are things that probably seem as though uh, you know somebody's holding you back or somebody's dictating how you should or shouldn't be handling your property. But it's mm-hmm. unfortunately the reality of living in sectional title communities. I am, of course, this evening in conversation with the APSA Home Loan team. I'm speaking to Aya Sangha Bosman, who's a portfolio manager of insurance at APSA Home Loans, as well as Esther LaRue, who's a manager for valuation strategy at APSA Home Loans. We're looking at renovations for 2021. So if you have any renovation project that you want to embark on, these are some of the things that are very important for you to consider. We know that so many of us spent quite a significant amount of time working from home last year. We know that we're very likely going to be doing that for the rest of this year. And you're probably sitting at home thinking, look, there, these are the, some of the changes that I want to be making in my property and want to be, have a better understanding of what you can and uh, and what you can and cannot do, especially if you live in sectional title communities. And of the things that you can do, Who needs to be notified of your intention to do those particular um, renovations? Now, I say I want to bring you back in. I mean, we were talking earlier about some of the repercussions when people don't inform the you know the bank or the different we'll say stakeholders um, that they essentially need to notify. I know that so many so so oftentimes people uh, retrospectively want to. Uh, you know, notify whether it's the bank or perhaps the municipality. Maybe take us through just slightly a bit more when we look at those, you know, repercussions of what the bank can do in the event where perhaps you tell them retrospectively that, uh, you know, I actually did this particular alteration or if you even want to do that with the municipality where you first kind of 
go steaming ahead with the alterations and only after the fact, uh, maybe somebody lets you know that you actually do need to uh, inform your bank, especially because your property is bonded. Um, I think um, when you refer to sectional title, I think it's important for sectional title owners to understand that the reason all the changes or additions needs to go through a body corporate is because um, the floor area ratio, so if I can explain it, it's the footprint of the buildings on the land. You can only build up until a certain percentage of that land. So if one person ex extends his section um, by a certain uh, square metrage, then that reduces the floor area available to other residents. So it's very important. Um, you said you, you live in sectional title community. It's very important for that community to work together and, and make sure they understand the implication um, when they provide approvals um, of extensions or, or, or enclosures even in body corporates and what the result will be. I think um, other than that, um, I also see a lot of questions or queries with regards to um, I haven't increased the floor area of my property. For example, I have a garage. Um, I want to um, convert the garage into two flats. I add two kitchens and two bathrooms because I want to um, uh, achieve a rental income to assist me with my uh, bond repayments. Um, what a lot of people doesn't realize that even if you don't increase the footprint of the building, you only change the usage of the building, you will still need to, re, um, to have approved plans drawn up and have the usage of that specific building changed. The reason for that is each municipality has bylaws um, or town planning schemes which guides the usage of a property. So, for example, in Twane municipality, you are only allowed to erect your home or the main building and then one flat. If you've converted your garage into two flats, you are now in contravention of the zoning for your property. Um, so you have to apply for rezoning and then you have to get the plans approved. Um, you, you talked about repercussions. The repercussions is... As a property owner, I think it's very important to understand the importance of making sure that you have approved plans, that your property use um, is legal and that the, the, the buildings on the properties that you've erected is legal. Because when you sell your property, and maybe even if you're not, um, if you don't have a bond at the moment, if you sell the property to someone who applies for a bond, mm -hmm. we take that into consideration during the bond process, during the application process, when we value your property. Because you must understand that if you don't have approved plans, um, it means that there's an illegal structure on the property and it detracts from the value of the property. Um, and the property is what you offer as security for the loan we extend, we as banks extend to you. So that impacts our security. Um, so it's very important for, for you as a property owner who wants to increase or maintain the value of your property to ensure that you have approved plans, um, that you have the right zoning, if there's encroachment that you relax the building lines. Um, so I think for me, value and the ability to apply for, for, for a bond um, is the most important challenges when we, when you will fight what you sorry that you will face when trying to sell a property um, that doesn't meet the requirements and bylaws of the municipalities. We are taking your questions and comments here on the Private Property Podcast with myself, Zamandongo Kumalo. We are speaking to the APSA Home Loan team. We're looking at renovations 2021 and some of the things that you need to bear in mind if you have a renovation project this year. And I'm going to go to our Facebook comment. We've got a Facebook comment here coming from Utsepo Mokhubudi, who says, Good evening, Private Property family. One thing I learned about property renovations is that always consider the market value of your property within your residential 
residential area and how much worth your area is. It's absolutely pointless to renovate your house into a five star, whereas the area you live in downgrades it. That's a huge loss to make. And that's something that, you know, I find that a lot of homeowners also don't uh, think about is that you end up overcapitalizing on your particular home and you spend far too much money um, on it. And let's say at the time the property is actually bonded, you use some of your own money to, you know, make those big renovations. And by the time that you need to sell, when you actually sit down and do your calculations, you've essentially put far too much money into the property. And it's so difficult for you to adequately recover some of it because you've, as uh, you know, Tepo puts it, you've put these five-star finishes, but the area is probably at best a three-star area. Uh, so any tips for our viewers at home to not make that kind of mistake? Because in as much as you may want to have the best finishes, uh, you know, that money can buy, you do have to think of the fact that perhaps a few years down the line, you might want to sell that particular property and you don't want to have uh, spent too much money on it. I think we all have personal tastes um, and um, some of us might like a black kitchen um, or a shocking pink bathroom. Um, but when you renovate, you must keep in mind um, the saleability of your property and the demand for your property. So what I would recommend is before you attempt any reservations, go speak to your local estate agent. Ask them um, what is the market-related property prices um, that you can expect um, when you uh, make certain um, additions. So, for example... Um, you have a three-bedroom home, you want to increase it to a four-bedroom home, um, that neighborhood ne doesn't necessarily, there's not necessarily a demand for a four-bedroom home, which means the building costs would be quite high, um, but you won't get the value, the increase in market value. So um, I think it's very important to understand your area, to understand what the market um, view as what the, where the demand is, is the demand for um, white kitchens. Um, so understand the demand, understand your area, understand market-related property prices. And I think for that, the best advice I can give is um, ask a competent agent that um, has been working in the area, that is very knowledgeable, ask them before you make any changes to your property to give you some guidance um, as to a value increase that you can expect um, when making these changes. And then consider the costs. At this point in time, building costs are unfortunately uh, a very, it is higher than it would be um, uh, uh, buying a, a second dad or, or, or a existing property. So mm -hmm. building is expensive. Mm. Look, uh, building is certainly expensive. I mean, I always say to people, especially on my social media platforms, if, if you had to choose between building uh, stress and buying stress, buying stress any given day, uh, I can take buying stress in my sleep. Uh, building stress, on the other hand, comes with so many sets of problems. Uh, and, and one of them is even deciding what you want, right? The kind of finishes you want, how you want your house to essentially be. So having that blank canvas uh, can also just be so overwhelming. So it's probably better if you're already just making a decision of actually one, three bedrooms, two must be in seats, as opposed to having to work from a blank um, wow. age altogether. Now, Isa, I, I want to bring you in. I mean, one of the things that we're currently seeing right now um, in, 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 the, in certain parts of the country is the damage due to, you know, Cyclone Louise. And uh, part of me is wondering if there are people at home who are looking at doing some of those renovations. And, and let's say, let's argue, for example, that the renovations weren't done to, you know, to a good quality, whether insurance would perhaps cover something like that where we now have bad rains or whichever way that, you, you know, any kind of um, weather damage, how would insurance, you know, deal with those kinds of issues? Because we do sometimes see that homeowners want to cut costs as much as possible when it comes to renovations. And unfortunately, where they think they're saving on rents now, they mm -hmm. subsequently, you know, uh, tend to also take away quality down the line. And it has a way of badly catching up with you uh, when there is, you know, whether it's a bad, bad rains or massive storm. So mm -hmm. how does insurance then come in when people are faced with those kinds of situations? Yeah. 
So I think it's more important to note that insurance is intended for um, unforeseen events and sudden circumstances in essence. So things like wear and tear is not necessarily covered. So it's important to maintain your property. And I think we had that discussion last year. Um, what, what I think to note here is that if the workmanship on your property, the work that's been done isn't up to standard, it doesn't meet the regulations, then there's a chance that your insurer will not then um, ultimately honor that claim. So it's important for you, for people to, um, for, guess, for, the, for the listeners also to understand that when you get someone, get someone who's reputable and they're going to um, build in line with the building regulations in essence. So it's, and, and that makes sure that if that person isn't going to do that, at least try and make sure you get a guarantee around that because you don't want to find yourself in a position whereby you've spent a lot of money, the work has been done um, and it's not up to standard. And then next thing you know, when something falls over, you, you, your, your claim is not on it in essence. Mm-mm-mm. We've got another question here coming through from Facebook. Usbongilo Kumalo says, if I want to remove the lawn and replace it with paving, do I need to inform anyone? SD, I'll, I'll give that question to you. Uh, no, no, you don't need to inform anyone if you want to replace your lawn with paving. I don't think that that is necessary. If you want to erect a coal port, um, yes, that needs to be indicated on a plan. If you want to build a swimming pool, that also needs to be um, um, uh, also needs to, you need to update your plans um, with regards to that. You, you know, as, the, as as you were even saying. You know, putting a cupboard. I know so many people in their homes, you know, adding a cupboard and I know they're not notifying anybody because you're just thinking, look, there was nothing there. I now just need this. Maybe they, you know, maybe one of your kids now has a car or it's actually for your own car. I, I, I feel as though nobody actually thinks I'm adding this cupboard for the car. Somebody needs to be notified that I'm doing this. So it is one of those things that uh, you, we probably don't take mind off and perhaps is if you can sh- share a few other things in the in the yard that would typically inform um you know whether it's your bank or even the municipality because i think in as much as you know we said earlier it's structural changes i wouldn't have picked something like a cupboard as something that i need to notify somebody off if i wanted to add it so i and i know many viewers at home are thinking how but that's just you know, one thing, it's hardly, you, you almost wouldn't perceive it as a structural change, even though when you actually sit down and think about it, it is in fact a structural change. Perhaps take us through some of the more common ones that we would, you know, be some of the common changes that we'd be making that definitely require us to to notify whether it's our fin- uh, uh, the financial institutions that's bonding the property or perhaps even the municipality. I think carports, uh, swimming pools, uh, LAPAS, Um, I think from an insurance perspective, it's also quite important, um, especially uh, uh, because of the fire hazard it might cause. Um, I think that's the the main um, guilty parties, if I can put it that way. I think it's swimming pools, carports, um, outbuildings, storage rooms, anything with a roof um, to to be on your plan, indicated on your plan. Um, And then, as I said, swimming pools. And if yeah, I may come in, Zama, I yes, think yes. To, to the point, I guess, that, that, that Esti was making. So if you're going to change the use of the property, um, it's also important to understand that maybe will change the risk around your insurer. So I think uh, Esti made the example of you can add an additional bedroom or let's say now you're suddenly going to start running a business out of your house. That changes the risk on your property. So you might find that your building is in a residential area and it's covered for residential purposes. But the minute you start doing other activities, you need to get a different type of insurance. So that's another consideration that people need to make if you're making those kind of changes as well. Mm. And I think chances are so many people who are currently finding themselves working from home, and I know so many are trying to even make the transition to work from home full time and make the kind of changes where their home space uh, essentially even has an additional outside home office because they, they want to have a certain level of this is still the house, this is the sanctuary, uh, I've got the space to have that home office outside and be able to conduct work. So it may not be your own business, but it's certainly work that you're able to do out there. They're probably not thinking about, you know, the other kind of insurance that you may potentially want to consider because it's now not purely used for residential purpose because you're essentially, you know, doing work or conducting business uh, in that outside structure. Correct. And it's important to note that, I guess, on a percentage utilization, what we currently look at um, 
on but as long as if you're just still i guess using your home as an office there's you still can get away with that but then when you start um, trying to do manufacturing uh and you're doing uh, all those kind of things heavy ma- ma- machinery then it changes the the, the view completely Mm-mm. Before I let both of, both of you go this evening, I certainly want to wrap up with any final tip you'd like to share. Um, I said, I'll start with you. I want to share with viewers at home uh, that they need to be need to consider and almost be top of mind when it comes to uh, how their home renovation ambitions for 2021 is going to affect their insurance. What is, what's the one thing that needs to be top of mind uh, when they're thinking about home renovations and how it can potentially affect um, the kinds of things they need to think about about their insurance? Probably the first one, I, or I guess the only thing I can say is if you're going to make renovations to your house, make sure you consider the view of your maintenance as well. So if you Upkeep is very important. Always make sure before you make big furbishments and refurbishments rather, understand what your property looks like and whether it's been maintained. The roof is still up to standard um, and everything's working accordingly. You've maintained the, the ceilings in terms of the cracks and everything else. So that's probably the, the big thing for me. Before you do the big things, take care of the small things. Mm-mm-mm. And that's such an important one because I think oftentimes we want all the the, the big things, all those big finishes, but we actually haven't taken time to take care of the smaller things first before we actually make some of those changes. Essie, before I come to you for that final comment, I'm going to come through with a question here from YouTube. This is coming from Upeti Moyo saying, do I need to have plans approved if I'm taking down walls inside the property? Uh, do we consider that a structural change? So I think um, Zama, she must just um, make sure that she employs a qualified builder to make sure that when she removed wall, removes walls within the property, that it's not load-bearing walls that's being removed, which will impact the structure of the property and then will impact the value of the property. So just make sure when you're removing walls um, that you have the right technical expertise. Um, but removing walls, um, we don't, from a bank perspective, we don't need to be notified. Um, from a plan perspective, um, I'm not 100% sure. I'll come back to you um, with that answer. Um, if you need to redraft your plans, if you're taking or removing walls in the interior of your property. Mm-mm-mm. And we'll definitely let you know, Petty will uh, follow up with SD, uh when it comes to whether you need to update your plans or not. But I think the very big thing to note is you want to work with a very good contractor on this one, because as Essie said, it can't be a, a weight bearing wall. Uh, I think if anything, that would actually be quite catastrophic for you uh, if they, you know, take down the incorrect walls. So you certainly do want to make sure that you work with the right team. Now, Esti, to wrap up this evening, any final, you know, tip you'd like to share with our viewers who are looking at renovations this year when it comes to how it will affect certainly the value of their property uh, or perhaps what they should be always be mindful of when they make those alterations and how it could affect the value of the of the property so i think um for me it's important for the um listeners to understand that we underestimate the technical um knowledge that you need when you own a property so my advice would be make sure that you understand the municipal bylaws that affect your property make sure you understand the sectional title act if you live in a sectional title complex I think the most important thing of property ownership is making sure you understand your rights, your right as an owner, but also your obligations, and then how that will impact the value of your property. Mm. Well, we're going to leave it there this evening. Thank you so much, Esti. Thank you so much, Ayasanga. It has been a pleasure to be with you this evening. Thank you, Kaili Zama. Thank you. And that is Asanga Bisman, who is the Portfolio Manager of Insurance at APSA Home Loans, as well as Esti LaRue, who is the Manager for Valuation Strategy at APSA Home Loans. And that brings an end to the Private Property Podcast with myself, Zamantungo Kumalo, on this Wednesday. But we're not quite done yet. Uh, we're going to go for a quick break. And when we come back, we've got a surprise for you. You know, every single evening, I always talk about some of the great shows that you can expect across our social media platforms. Well, there's something that we've been working on here on Private Property, and we're going to share it with you just after this break. Ezra, thank you so much. Ezra, thank you so much. Welcome back to the first show. I just wanted to make... Um, because if you if you judge the interior
here the nine minutes for the chat. The room description. I just want to make hundred percent sure before I give you an answer. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. I'm very good, thanks. Are you able to change your camera to landscape? Uh, okay. Look at me doing your job, Yola. <laughs> How do I do that? Um, so, are you using an iPhone? I'm not using a Samsung. No, but if you just flip it, he needs to unlock his screen first. So you need to like change your screen that yeah. No, it's on the stand. I've got my phone on the stand. On a uh, stand. You can still flip it. You can still flip it. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. There you go. Welcome back to the Wednesday edition of the Private Property Podcast. I'm your host, Uzamantungwa Kumalo. I know you're probably wondering, why did we come back? Why haven't we wrapped up the show? Well, we've been talking about home renovations this evening with the AFSA Home Loan Team. And it's actually such a great coincidence, and I don't even believe in coincidences. But we're also going to be launching a great show right here on private property, and that is Bzansi, uh, Bzansi Cribs Makeover. I'm sure so many of you have seen the post on social media, probably also seen it on our uh, social media platforms. And I've got the presenter of the show, Tato Mba, this evening. Tato, good evening, and thank you so much for joining us. Evening, Zama. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. I mean, Tato, we've been talking about uh, renovations just on this show and the different things viewers at home need to be considering with renovations. And we're now talking about this great show. Tell us what viewers at home can expect from Zanzi Cribs Makeover. So what, what they can expect is a lot of information about um, doing your own makeover shows. But, uh, but more so, they'll, they'll get you to see the other side of South Africans, you know, the human side of, of people. You know, it's, it's about the story first and then the makeover uh, as secondary 
But the, 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 the combination of the two is powerful, just to see how certain people, you know, are, are less privileged than others. And through this makeover show, we are actually changing lives and bringing dignity back to these families. Mm -hmm. And that's such an important thing, you know, Tato, because oftentimes when you think of renovations, the renovation itself is often secondary, right? The primary thing is about the story, is about whether it's a kitchen renovation or it's a bedroom renovation. There's always a story behind that renovation. Well, I'm already excited to catch the show. Tell our viewers where they can catch this exciting show. They love hearing about new shows, especially if it has anything to do uh, with their homes and bettering the homes that they live in. We know that that, you know, certainly here at Private Property, we always talk about, you know, your own space and making your own rules. So where can viewers at home watch this new show? So it'll, it'll, it'll premiere tomorrow evening at half past nine on Mzansi Magic Channel 161 on DSTV. And if you, if you miss uh, tomorrow's um, uh, premiere, you can catch it on Saturdays um, in the morning at half past nine. And if you miss that, you can catch it on Sundays in the afternoon at 2 p.m. So, there's, there's, there's enough repeats for those that are going to miss it um, uh, tomorrow evening. But I'll urge everyone to actually tune in tomorrow evening at half past nine on um, Zanzi Magic Channel 161. It's worth the wait. It's worth everything um, that's coming uh, your way. Well, we're certainly excited, uh, Tato. To viewers at home, that is on Zanzi Magic. Uh, that is uh, tomorrow at 9.30. That's the premiere. You definitely do not want to miss it. And the repeat's going to be on Saturdays at 9.30 in the morning, as well as Sunday at 2 o'clock. So do make sure that you set those alarms tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be right after uh, the last show that we have. So you really don't have an excuse not to tune in. <laughs> Tato, we're quite excited with this particular one. We love hearing about new shows and I'm sure so many viewers at home are going to enjoy hearing the different stories of the different families that you'll be touching with the different renovations. Thank you so much. We're definitely excited to see what you're going to be bringing to our screens. Thank you so much. And thanks, for, thanks to Private Property for being a part of this amazing and incredible show. Thank you very much. And that is, of course, the brand new show, Zanzi Crib Makeover, uh, that you can look forward to on your television screen tomorrow evening at 9.30. And that's going to be an exciting one. We love makeovers. And this evening, we're already talking about renovations. So if you want to follow the path of ordinary South Africans making over their respective homes, then make sure that you set those alarms for tomorrow evening. Well, that's it from me, Zamantu Kumalo, and the rest of the team this evening. It certainly has been a pleasure. It's a Wednesday, so you can catch the episode of the First Time Home Buyers Show with SD Classing at 8 p.m. I do hope that you're going to enjoy that one. As usual, hoping you're staying home and staying safe. <laughs>
where we are next to the farm where folk can walk the dog, go for runs and enjoy the fresh air. In the southern suburbs we're lucky enough to have some of the top schools in the country and on top of that we have the University of Cape Town, one of the most famous universities in the world. Newlands is a great suburb, all the sporting amenities, Newlands rugby ground, cricket ground, etc. Down the road at Claremont, lots of shopping centres for the kids and for the mothers to do their shopping. Fantastic pubs and restaurants around like Forries, Springbok Bar. Bishop's Court is full of beautiful upmarket homes. Kirstenbosch Gardens, National Botanical Gardens right next door. What attracted us to Constantia is, is the large open spaces. I've always wanted to be a farmer and now I'm living next to Kruger Constantia Wine Estate, the oldest wine farm in, in the country where you have fantastic wines, great restaurants, got the best of both worlds. My family and I have loved every moment of living in Constantia. We couldn't be happier and this is our neighbourhood.